This video is a summary of the chapter on genetics in my book. Links to purchase the book are in the video description. What is the connection between the Aryan migration theory and genetics? Genetics is an arcane subject and it has become fashionable to quote genetic proof for something or other very often by people who don't have the foggiest idea of what genetics can tell us and what it cannot tell us. Western linguists made the claim that Aryans brought the Sanskrit language to India by invasion or migration. They had no proof for migration or invasion and hence looked at genetics research for proof of migrations. Multiple migrations have occurred into and out of India in the last 65,000 years and evidence of these migrations can be found in the genetic makeup of Indians. But linguists are only interested in showing that there was one massive migration or invasion 3,500 years ago or about 1500 BCE because they've already decided that there must have been such a migration of an Aryan race that they invented and genetic researchers have been tasked to find evidence for this. Since genetics does not detect any language, it cannot be used to show if migrants brought any particular language to India. For this reason, they attempt to use genetics to show the consequences of the imaginary Aryan invasion as invented by linguists. In this story, a victorious group called Aryans, speaking a precursor language to Sanskrit, came from the steppe region of Eurasia on horses and chariots and destroyed the Indus Valley civilization in 1500 BCE. They drove away the local people who were dark-skinned Dravidians according to them and then the invaders set up a caste system to avoid mixing with the defeated Dravidians. Then the Aryans proceeded to compose the Vedas. Genetic researchers are asked to find proof for the following linguistic theories. 1. There should be common genes between Indians and people of the steppe area of Eurasia. 2. Migration should have occurred from the steppe to India. 3. Genes of North Indians should be different from those of South Indians based on languages. 4. Genes of the upper castes should be similar to North Indians but different from South Indians. A close study of many genetics papers from Western laboratories reveals how they went after these targets. They searched for common genes between people of the Eurasian steppe region and Indians and tried to show that Northwest Indians had inherited genes from the steppe. Northwest Indian genes had to be different from South Indian genes. And also genes of forward castes in India were supposed to be similar to those steppe genes while the genes of backward castes were supposed to be like South Indian genes. A man called David Reich a big name in genetics, instituted an extraordinarily biased study. Claiming that all 1.3 billion Indians were being studied, a paltry 132 samples were taken and these samples too were not representative of the Indian population. Reich and team took 20% of their samples from upper castes and although tribes form just 7.6% of the Indian population, 54% of the samples were from tribals. And other groups who form 75% of the Indian population were barely sampled. Any neutral reviewers would have trashed this selection as a skewed one. But the incestuous peer review process of Western journals allows bias to be published as science. And using these biased samples, the group tried to show massive differences in genetic structure between North Indian language speakers and South Indian language speakers and between forward castes and backward castes. Despite contorting the selection to reach a particular conclusion, the results showed that most Indians, whether North Indian language speakers or South Indian language speakers, had a very similar mix of genes, mostly ranging from 40 to 60 percent in each group. The same holds true for the genetic makeup of various castes, as can be seen in this graph. Then came along a genetics researcher called Vaghish Narsimhan who compared genes obtained from skeletons in graves in various places with modern genes to conclude that Indians had steppe genes and therefore Indians must be speaking steppe language. These conclusions failed on two counts even before the study went for final publication. Genes do not reveal language spoken and genetic studies cannot give proof of language. But worse than that is the fact that no one knows what language was spoken in the steppe area 3500 years ago 
and linguists have simply assumed that the people there must have spoken a language, a language that was created by the linguists themselves and called PIE or Proto-Indo-European. Worse was yet to come for this particular study. At a later date, the genes from a 2500 BCE skeleton in India from a place called Rakhi Garhi were analysed and the findings suggested that there was a migration from India to the West rather than in the opposite direction. Next, we come to the R1 saga, one of the most long-drawn-out and dramatic stories imagined for Indians by geneticists. All men have what is called as a Y chromosome, and a small part of this chromosome contains a subset that is called R1. When it was discovered that R1 was found all the way from Western Europe through Eastern Europe, Russia, Central Asia and India, there was great rejoicing that the ultimate Aryan gene had been found. However, the bubble burst very quickly when it was discovered that Western Europe had a fragment called R1b, while the other areas, marked in red here, had R1a. The disappointment that R1 may not be the gene associated with the spread of Indo-European languages was replaced by the idea that the R1a fragment, also called M17, was the real step gene with which language came to India. The distribution of R1a M17 is shown in this map. But the authors of the paper, Underhill and colleagues, made a curious discovery that turned the whole migration debate on its head. They discovered that the oldest evidence of R1a M17 was in India and was about 12,000 years old. The evidence for the same gene got more and more recent as one goes up into Eurasia and Eastern Europe. Finally, about 5,000 years ago, M17 mutated and produced a marker called M458. This 5,000-year-old marker does not appear in India. The meaning of this finding is that men migrated from India to Russia and Eastern Europe starting 12,000 years ago and settled there, but they did not come back any time in the last 5,000 years. After this, one more paper caused a lot of celebration and joy for the community of people who want the Aryan myth to become true. One study suggested that a fragment of R1a found in India called the Z93 originated in Iran, suggesting that men from Iran came to India. However, the joy was short-lived. Here again, the selection of samples for the study was crossly biased. Of the 101 so-called South Asian samples, 44 were Pakistanis, 12 more were from Punjab or Gujarat, leaving out samples of the majority of Indians from the vast Indian subcontinent. The R1A story is important to know because people still refer to this particular marker. When you collect up all the results from multiple scientific papers and plot R1A on a graph, the findings are illustrative of the bluffing and obfuscation that this issue has been plagued with. Among Indians, R1A is most frequent among all castes in the east of India and in the northern Ganga plain. R1a is much less common in the northwest. If men carrying the gene had come from the northwest as suggested, the percentage of people there in the northwest with a marker should have been higher. In fact, the percentage of R1 among Kashmiri pundits is lower than that of many other groups. A researcher called Sangamitra and her team studied samples from a wide cross-section of Indians and showed that R1 in India was oldest within India and had not come from migrants. Finally, a recent study by Gyaneshwar Chaube showed that the Aryan invasionists bluff that the caste system created Brahmins who preserved their genetic purity was nonsense and groups of Brahmins had a widely variant paternal genetic signature showing that intermixing was thorough and not rigidly restricted as alleged by the Aryan invasion Nazis. Thanks for watching. If you need more detail, please do consider reading my book. The links for the Indian paperback edition and the Kindle edition are in the description for this video.